Good morning, everyone. My name is Richards, and I have the honor to open this very lovely TEDx here at Air2. Before we begin with that one, I have one question to you to set the right energy for the whole day. Are you ready? Yes. It's not an exam. It's on TEDx. <laughs> once more. Are you ready? Yes. All right. That's the spirit. I'm here, first of all, to set the objectives for today. And those two objectives are, I'm here to encourage you to think and inspire you to act. OK? First of all, let me tell you a secret. You are a star. You, you you, you. Each one of us is a star, a unique star. If stars are differentiated by their spectrum of colors, then we as a humans are differentiated by our personalities, by our values, by our identity. We set our identity to rule out all of our lives. And each one of us is unique. We have to be very, very glad about that we are here on this world. Maybe sometimes a little bit confusing or difficult world, but we are here. And together with other stars, when we meet our majestic mates, we are making a constellations. We are making a communities. We are making a friends. We are making organizations. We are making a workplaces. And in that kind of way, we are also shaping a country as a universe of stars, or maybe something even farther away, some region, or overall the world. If you look from this kind of perspective, then at the micro level, it's us, our unique us, together with our closest relationships, with friends, partners, and so on. In the meso level, we are already, as mentioned before, either it's university, either it's work, either it's some kind of community, we are creating this world. One unique star added to another unique star. And overall, we are creating this world. But the question is, how in this 21st century to do not lose yourself? It all starts with the birth. Some lovely stork is bringing us into this world. We are naive, we are young, we don't have any kind of prejudice or any kind of experience. We are growing up and we are having our first influences. Our first influences comes from our parents. And our parents are taught by their parents. This is our first interaction with something what is bad or what is good from their perspective. And we are nourishing all this into ourselves. Later on, in the picture comes also the relatives, grandparents, uncles, aunts, and our stars are getting a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit bigger. But what happens when the stars are meeting different kinds of stars with different experience and with different knowledge, like in the kindergarten or later on in the school? This is the time when we are shaping our identity, the persons who we like to be and how we would like to interact with others. And then we are making those choices. Will we going to be the sporty ones or are we going to be the party ones? Yeah? All of those choices are influencing our identity, our personality. What happens next? Bam! An adult life. Yeah? But it doesn't, happen. it doesn't happen like that. Identity you can shape for the rest of your life. You might think something else in three years from this moment than you were thinking three years before. Yeah? We are growing. That's the key thing for every human being. We are growing. What influences our thinking? Our thinking, classical perspective, as mentioned before, it could be a partner when we are, have been grown up. It could be already previous experience with the parents. Second thing is the groups where are we are the most of the time, because if you can imagine, at workplace or at university, we are spending quite a lot of time with different kinds of stars around us, correct? The same goes for the third one, from the classical perspective, who is influencing our thinking. It's those persons who has achieved something, or those celebrities, or someone who we are looking onto the screens of TV, mobile devices, or so on. That's the classical perspective. But in nowadays, the peers are already in one section, and there's a huge, huge, huge impact currently on the media, both social media and the classical media. Why? 24-7. We can have this access. We can see what's going on in Australia, America, or whatsoever. Yeah? Those two combinations could be deadly if you do not think critically and you are not so sure what kind of person you would like to be. And the third one is a combination of this one. It's assumptions. It's assumptions that might 
be really, really bad for our future meetings with someone else. Because if you are having some kind of assumptions, previously existing knowledge, we might just walk by our next spouse or our next business partner or just a lovely, lovely friend. So let's do a one small thinking exercise. I will gonna give you five controversial questions. Not the nicest ones. You can show your attitude towards them. All right, are Americans bad? Thumbs up or hearts? All right, I see positive attitude. All right, very nice, that was the easy one. Are Latvians bad? Audience, please vote. Oh, a lot of hearts. Oh, this is lovely. Let's go for something harder. Are Russians bad? I see some divisions, most of the hearts here, some thumbs as well. Okay, let's step up our game. Are Palestinians bad? You see, are put any kind of word here, bad. Because those questions that I ask you are double-sided questions. First of all, they are empty. They are empty without the context. They are empty without looking into those stars, those specific stars. Second of all, they are loaded. They are neither true, they are neither false. Yeah? Those questions without context is nothing. In this kind of example, we cannot generalize it because we wouldn't like to be generalized on our own. We are human beings, correct? And from those four nationalities that I mentioned to you before, I know at least one person, one decent person by common society standards, which is not bad. So which it means mathematically incorrect that from the macro perspective, if you take away one star, that's not any more generalization. That's not any more macro. That's not any more country or worldwide. Okay? Treat yourself as you would like to be treated. And this is the approach. Each star is human. Each meeting, give the benefit of doubt. If you're meeting someone here in the hallway, if you are meeting someone while well, we are going to be mingling, it's a human. Ask the right questions. Communicate and see the person as something unique. Because being in this world, I will going to remind you once more, it's something incredible. Can you imagine? There were two people, and then they made another people. Another person from their law, from their interaction. That's something incredible that we have to value throughout this 21st century, which, as I mentioned, is a difficult one a little bit. How to shape your identity? Those are the choices. Those are the choices that you are making on a daily basis. It's like an election. You are going and putting your ballot into the box. What kind of person I would like to be? But don't get me wrong. You don't have to be 100% right. You have to get the majority. If you want to be an active person, go for the run instead of the TV. Yeah? If you want to be a healthy person, go for the salads instead of the burger. Make those choices. It won't gonna be a bad thing if you're going to make one TV show that you're going to be watching or binge watching or making some kind of once in a while burger house appearance. But make the majority of your decisions to influence the identity, what kind of you would like to be, because it's only up to you what kind of person you are going to be. And this is one simple thing to remember. As long as you do not harm physically, emotionally anyone else, it's just up to you what kind of person you are going to be. Simple as that. It's your choice. It's your destiny. And you are creating it. For example, here's my example. How I would like to be perceived by you. Communicative guy, marketing, writing, reading, being active. This is how I would be like to be perceived by you. Not like a white Latvian male. Rehertz, that's the thing, yeah? If you switch it like this, it would be like this kind of list with the hashtags. I like to be perceived as precise. I came on time. I like to read, I like to write, I like to spend time with my family. I'm active. These are my personality traits, yeah? Overall, that I would like to be associated with and that I'm working towards every day by day with my votes. It's a constant communication both internal and external. The internal one is the one where you are waking up in the morning and asking what kind of person I would like to be. Constantly. It's not like that you are going to be in 20s. Yeah, that's, that's it. I'm done. I'm settling for a job. I'm settling for a partner. That's it. No, it's a continuous process till the end when you stop to breathe. And the external part, meanwhile, is the part where you are communicating with others. Because from ancient perspective, those who were sticking together, they were a greater chance to survive. Yeah? It's also one of those processes that mirroring. When you are mirroring someone, you are attracting also someone. So here will going to be also some takeaways 
what we can use easily, any kind of situation. So those are top eight soft skills that I am suggesting to any one of you. Either it's for business, marketing, sales, communication, or just going for a date. Those are the eight soft skills that will gonna help to improve the world. Because honestly, I can say, I'm a young, naive, Ted Lasso kind of a guy. I believe in a better world. And I believe that every small impact from you, from you, from you, from you, from me, can make this world a better place. If you're gonna all think that, damn, it's so tough, what's going on? What's going on geographically? What's going on overall? Then that's it. It's us, the believers, who might affect with small, small steps to have a better place for ourselves and also for our future. And let's go with the first top skill, smile. Smile is one of the best ways how to interact with other peers. Because it's both from the biological perspective, it's also from the reciprocity principle. Reciprocity principle dictates that if someone is coming to you with a smile, there's a greater chance that you're going to also respond with a smile. Yes, this also goes for the gift giving. If I give you a gift, you will feel obligated to return the gift for me. This goes with a smile. This goes with the positive emotions. Can you imagine, would you like to be in the room with me or would you like to be in the room with me? That's the thing, smile. And also one of the tricks that I did also at the beginning, get quite quickly the answer yes. Because when you get the answer yes, it's much more easier to get an engagement with other persons around. So smile, be positive, ask questions. Presence, in nowadays, presence. What it means, I'm present with you and I'm really glad that you are present with me. Present means that you are leaving your cell phone down somewhere. If you're sitting in a cafeteria, if you're sitting in a, on the campus, leave the cell phone somewhere else. If you're with a person or with the persons, you are interacting, you are interrupting and interacting. And that's the thing, you are not interrupting your conversations because cell phones likes to interrupt the conversations and maybe some magical meets as well, yes? So be present in the moment, enjoy it. When you walk on the street, just check up what's going on there on our beautiful Riga, for example. Encouragement, if you want to find out more about the other person, ask questions, ask questions, no prejudice. No assumptions, but ask right questions. If you are not sure of something about, ask questions. Those are the key questions. What? What is it? Why? Why am I doing it? Or why it might be important for me? Or how? How to manage it? And who? Who might be the person responsible for this one? Those are the questions, key questions, open-ended questions, which will gonna bring you a lot of information and can also avoid a lot of conflicts. Still, if you're going for the conflict, better is don't go for the conflict. But still, if you're going for that kind of situation, when it's a bit tougher, try to avoid the conflict and turn it to the discussion. What's the difference between conflict and discussion? Discussion brings some result. This discussion is fruity, fruitful. Conflict, it's negative. You have to go for the discussion because discussion can also develop into something greater. Praise, one of the simplest things, praise. Sometimes we forget to praise things that we care about, our beloved ones, a really good partner or a really good student, which is in our group, who does a great job. We can also praise a barista, for example, on a coffee shop. Praise, sincere praise can make a better world, and it can also make a better relationships to each one of us. So simple as that, as thank you. Thank you for being on this world. Thank you for our lives, and thank you for something really great. For example, thank you to the RTU team for this lovely, lovely event. I'm also saying thank you because I'm spreading the world and really being pleased about this one. Sixth, when you are talking with someone and maybe the situation is not sticking till the end, think about their perspective. Think about the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Each of our stars are in different kind of place at their moments of the time or their lives. So think about their perspective ask more questions, and feel some empathy. Stereotypes. Blue is not a color for boys. Pink is not a color for girls. Blue is just a color, pink is just a color. That's it. It's about genders, it's about nationalities, it's about anything that you can imagine. No to stereotypes. Because stereotypes can lock many, many, many doors for some majestic meats. That's true. Because I will gonna, if I will gonna just only assume what I'm thinking and relying on some other experience or some other 
knowledge, I might lose it. I might not meet my business partner's boss or someone else, or any kind of interruptions. So stereotypes are one of those craziest things that are killing a lot of, lot of things. Also new businesses, fear, and so on. So no to stereotypes, and yes to tenacity. Be perseverant. Maybe it won't gonna go easy with the first time, maybe not with the second one. Either it's habit development, either it's your identity, be persistent. Go for it. And remember, this is a bonus one. We only have this present moment. Past is gone. Future is yet to come. We have only this present moment. Go for today. The approach is long term, but still think about today. Just today, I will gonna go for a run. Just today, I will gonna be a little bit happier. Just today, I will gonna be a little bit nicer. Take the perspective and nourish your star. We are all unique and it's great to be on this world. This is the world that we are creating, each one of us on our own. But both, we can do it also together. So one star combines with another stars, and we are creating this reality together. So ending my session, life is not a problem to be solved, but a reality to be experienced. What kind of reality it will gonna be, it's only up to you. Thank you.